now you know epidural, subdural, we are not studying the clinical sciences, we, we are just studying the basic correlating with the clinical. Okay, we'll talk about subarachnoid also. Do you think we should consider right now or later on? Yeah. You want to right now discuss and finish the matter? Yeah. Okay, you want to do it right now. Okay. I will make another diagram or the same diagram should be built up. You want new diagram or same diagram? And showing all four. Okay, I'll make new diagram in which all four hemorrhages are there. Right? Okay, this is central nervous system. Oh, I think this is asymmetric. Do you think uh, there's a difference in the brain of men and women? Yes, yes. What is the difference? There are so many differences. Yeah? Yes. Uh, a men's brain is bigger or women's brain is bigger? Bigger. But why women's brains sometimes work better than men? Because it's smaller but it's more condensed. No, no, no. <laughs> no, no, no. Look, uh, actually to make the real and very good decisions, both brains, right hemisphere and left hemisphere should consult each other. Because right hemisphere is master in making different judgments. Right hemisphere is concerned with different type of intelligence and left is concerned with different type of intelligence. I will not go into detail now. I will teach you when I teach you cerebral hemisphere, just as a word, that right hemisphere is more concerned with in intuitive, intuition, intuitive thinking. And left is more concerned with analytical thinking. Right? Like mathematics is more here. And, and poetry is more, uh, musical sense is more here. Is that right? This is more logical brain. It is more intuitive brain. And you know, women are clever. They have a very heavy connections between right and left. Their corpus callosum is far more heavily built as compared to the men's corpus callosum. Now you understand why you suffer so much sometimes. I'm talking to the men. Right? So there's no they mix the logic with intuition. Right? And we keep on playing logically. And then we find women are illogical. Because we cannot go as well on the intuitive side. Let's come back before they make some case against me. Right. So this is your central nervous system. Fine. Here I put uh, the red is the vascular. What is this? Yes, please hurry up. Yeah. It is pia matter or pia matter? Pia. Yeah. OK. My pronunciation is very private and personal. <laughs> right. This is pia matter. OK. For last 18 years, it was pia matter for me. Anyway, no problem. So pia matter. And then around it, what is there? Yes, please. Uh, I'll put all the four hemorrhages together so that you have a more clear. Then outside this, what should be there? Yes. It's a very simple diagram, not very anatomical. Right, this will dural sinus, let's suppose. Now, what was this hemorrhage? Epidural. Yes, epidural. No problem with this. And You know subdural. And if I intend to change the diagram then? <laughs> anyway, so you are right that this hemorrhage What is this? Yes, please. Subdural and what is the cause of this? Bridging? Veins? It is right or wrong? It is between the arachnoid and that. And now it become clear? Is that right? So this is epidural or extra dural. 
This is subdural. Is it clear? Okay. Then the next one is subarachnoid. Subarachnoid hemorrhage. That is the hemorrhage which occurs at this point. Subarachnoid space. And this spreads very well throughout the what is this? Subarachnoid space because it is full of CSF. So blood makes in CSF and spreads all over. Is that right? Now what is the cause of this hemorrhage? Subarachnoid hemorrhage. Baryaneurysm. I think she knows so much. What is baryaneurysm? Very good. First of all, you must know, just a minute, that in the subarachnoid space, there are many blood vessels which are approaching to the central nervous system, right? One of the very important circle of blood vessels, circle of blood vessel which are present in subarachnoid space is called circle of villus. That is called circle of villus. Now, if I really draw circle of villus here, you know internal carotid artery? Internal carotid artery, you have studied the anatomy? Okay, then you must be master of it. What is this artery? Interior cerebral artery, middle <laughs> cerebral artery. Am I clear? Internal carotid artery, middle cerebral artery. What is it? Internal carotid artery. This is on the right side, this is on the left side. What is this? Middle cerebral artery. What is this? Interior <laughs> cerebral artery, if you have studied anatomy. And here is your two friendly vessels, vertebral, vertebral, basilar, you know it? And turn as posterior, cerebral. Your vertebral arteries, right and left vertebral artery fuse together and make, what is this? Basilar artery, yes, basilar artery eventually break down into posterior, cerebral artery and posterior, cerebral artery. Now, this is called interior circulation of the brain. And this is called? posterior circulation of the brain, but they are connected with special vessels. This is anterior communicating vessels. What is this? And here it is posterior communicating vessels, arteries. And in this way, it makes a full circle. It makes a full circle. Is that right? This circle of blood vessels is present at the base of the brain in subarachnoid space. So if any point here ruptures, blood will come into which area? Subarachnoid space, right? Usually in circle of villa, some people have aneurysms. What are aneurysms? Aneurysms are abnormal, abnormal irreversible dilation of the vessel wall, right? For example, here, if this vessel, it is like this, and it is abnormally dilated here. This small sac is called berry aneurysm. It looks like a berry. We call it berry aneurysm. Or there may be a berry aneurysm at this point. So sometimes some people have small berry aneurysms that are abnormal dilatation of blood vessels participating in circle of villus. Right? And these are the weak points. Sometimes they spontaneously rupture. And if they spontaneously rupture, they produce very catastrophic and very severe hemorrhage in which space? Yes? Subarachnoid space, subarachnoid hemorrhage. So number one cause of subarachnoid hemorrhage is when there are berry aneurysms, right, within the circle of villus about 80% of the cases of subarachnoid hemorrhage. And second cause of subarachnoid hemorrhage is arteriovenous malformations. Second cause is arteriovenous malformation. These are congen congenital defects. That someone has abnormality in the development of arteries or veins, right, in that area. So either baryonism rupture or arteriovenous malformation ruptures. That produces very, very severe subarachnoid hemorrhage, right? And this hemorrhage will, blood will spread throughout the CSF filled cavity in subarachnoid space. 
Now you see one thing, as you go outside, hemorrhage is localized. As you are coming inside, hemorrhage is getting more spreading. For example, epidural was very much localized. Subdural was a bit more extensive. And subarachnoid uh, sub hemorrhage is really very, very extensive. Clinically also, it has different cause and different presentation. Here the cause is rupture of barrier aneurysms and arteriovenous Malformation. malformations. Secondly, clinically it comes with a very dramatic presentation. Patient with subarachnoid hemorrhage usually come with, he complains that he got very very severe and very sudden headache. Sudden headache and very severe headache. Even many patients complain that we felt with the onset of the headache as someone has hit us very badly on the head. But there is no hit, there is no trauma. It is spontaneous rupture. It is not due to any outside injury. It is usually barrier aneurysms rupture or arteriovenous malformations rupture spontaneously without any big external trauma. But patient feels so severe headache that many times they say that there is very severe excruciating headache with severe injury. As, as they feel, there's no injury, but they feel as if someone has hit on the head. Is that right? Number one. Number two, in the diagnosis of this thing, if you do the lumbar puncture, you will find RBCs in that. In lumbar puncture, you draw a sample of CSF. But take care, intracranial pressure should not be raised. Because with raised intracranial pressure, lumbar puncture is contraindicated. Is that right? So, you will find RBCs in that, in the CSF. You are doing lumbar puncture here. Hemorrhage started maybe at the top or somewhere else, but blood will track down. Is that right? Am I clear? Now, let's compare these three now. Subarachnoid hemorrhage, already you know, that it is involved in which spaces? between the subarachnoid and pia. Now you have to tell me, I will take a test of you. If hemorrhage is between bone and the meninges, dura, what is that? Epidural. Epidural. And if hemorrhage is between dura and arachnoid? Subdural. Subdural. And if hemorrhage is between arachnoid and pia? What is that? Subarachnoid. And if hemorrhage is within the pia and within the brain substance? Intracerebral, of course. Okay, let me tell you also. If blood vessels are going through the cerebral substance, right, of course they bifurcate there and make smaller vessels. Now what happens, especially patients who have chronic hypertension, they develop microaneurysms here within the brain substance. Is that right? And due to hypertension, sometimes these microaneurysms rupture. And they, what is this hemorrhage now? Intra? Cerebral. cerebral. Special feature of intracerebral hemorrhage is that it will lead to neurological deficit. The neurological function of that part of the brain will be lost which is suffering by this hemorrhagic event. Am I clear? Now, if a patient comes and he says that he got injury in the morning he became unconscious for a few minutes, he recovered completely, now he is developing headache and he is feeling drowsy and it is 10 hours from the first event. What do you think? Epidural. Which vessels are involved? Meningeal. And if, if some patient has fluctuating conscious level, you are not able to find what is wrong, you go for CT scan and you find a crescent shape Hemorrhagic area, what is that? Subdural. Subdural. What vessels may be bleeding? Bridging. Which vessels may be bleeding? Bridging. Bridging. Bridging veins, which you also call them cerebral veins. And if someone develops very severe headache, suddenly with that he develops in a very short time raised intracranial pressure. And if we say there's hemorrhage in, in cranial cavity, which hemorrhage this could be? Yeah? With very severe pain, this may be subarachnoid. Is that right? And if I say there's a patient who develops hemorrhage, 
uh, and that is due to hypertension by sm and small micro vessels rupture. Usually, the rupture in which area? In within the brain. In the within the brain substance. Intra cerebral hemorrhage. Am I clear to everyone?